Is Kawhi actually a better player under pressure than the great Kobe Bean Bryant? Yes, he is. Right now, at 52 years old. Right here, right now. Beat LeBron one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, and beyond, come on. You know, Stephen I. Oh, Smith. gosh, don't, don't, <laughs> don't do this. You know? <laughs> He just might be able to. Do, don't do he that. just might be able to. I don't know where Milwaukee goes from here. Because what are you I, whoa, 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 whoa. So listen. is this over? No, listen. I think it's over. This series is over. Yeah. To have the death beam pointed at Earth, you better hit it. I want Iguodala. The past five years or so has seen the downfall of sports media powerhouses into laughing stocks. He, he hit 13 he hit threes, the quarters, he hit the two. Yeah. Hey, guess what? That's what playmakers do. Working at a company like ESPN or Fox Sports at one time was the dream job for kids around the globe. With some of the most witty and fun anchors on television, Nowadays, ESPN has been overpassed by every media outlet in the market, while they have pathetically persisted to remain relevant. Nowadays, an NBA analyst is the furthest thing from serious basketball analysis, more so an idiot with a microphone screaming their heads off while saying the first thing that comes to mind, a formula that once saw their eyes of the largest sports talk show in recent history. The ESPN show First Take, originally hosted by Jay Crawford and Dana Jacobson, starting back in 2007, saw a very different formula from the one that we see now. The show was very similar to others on the network with frequent player interviews, news breakdowns, and the occasional argument. The show saw an enormous overhaul in August 2011 when Skip Bayless took a much bigger role. Many segments of the show were cut out while the debate was shifted to the main focus. The ratings increased drastically, but the real game-changing explosion happened the following year when guest contributor Stephen A. Smith permanently joined the show. This product quickly became the golden child of ESPN. Ratings rose 58% from the prior year, with the best performing duo in sports media at the time. ESPN had cracked the code for sports TV. The old-headed veteran Skip Bayless letting loose some viciously stupid takes, and Stephen A. Smith going berserk with his wide array of adjectives and over-the-top explosions. I can't lie, the show was an enormous success and kept you glued to the TV. But there, there was a few problems with this theme. Rinse and repeating the same style of content isn't going to work forever. After Skip's departure from the show in 2016 and Max Kellerman stepped in, it was clear that the controversial tactic of over-the-top antics and blatantly wrong sports takes was unauthentic. Max was always one of the more level-headed and laid-back personalities prior to this show. All of a sudden, he's this loudmouth clickbaiter. This garbage has basically turned ESPN's brand into the sports version of Allier's YouTube channel. Clickbait garbage, ungenuine scum, while masking the shit show of a brand with a likable smile. The quality of these so-called analysts has clearly taken an enormous hit from the glory days back in the 2000s. The sports media professionals, getting paid the highest salaries in the world to cover sports full time, clearly don't even know what they're talking about. It doesn't take a basketball genius to catch this. Look back nine years ago, when Mark Cuban ate up Skip Bayless for discrediting the Mavericks championship win and not knowing why teams run his own defense. Look at Stephen A. Smith saying the Lakers should trade Kyle Kuzma for Devin Booker. At this point, no one in the world is watching any NBA analyst for insightful sports breakdown. No one gives a flying fuck what Kendrick Perkins has to say. The top analysts in the world are being beaten down by average Joes with one one thousandth of the budget just posting videos on the internet. Why would you listen to Ryan Hollins ramble on about something he probably doesn't even believe when you can hear Kenny Beecham break down the same topic with much more research, reasoning, and authenticity? Why would you listen to Rachel Nichols share her thoughts when Jimmy High Roller just talked about the same thing with a production masterpiece? YouTube creators have become the Uber, while these TV personalities are a taxi cab, outdated with no point in funding. Another large criticism ESPN specifically received over the past few years has been the overcoverage of politics. I understand the coverage of large and prominent social issues from a business perspective, but time and time again it makes it hard to remember if this is CNN or a sports network. Whether you lean one way or the other, the move is just ridiculous. With the over-politicized climate that we're in, the lack of self-awareness that ESPN has is ridiculous. One of the greatest and healthiest escapes in the world is sports. When you're fed up with the outside world, 
So why not let fans escape when they need it the most? As a business, you're going to get in the news for all the wrong reasons and create a bigger divide than the one we're already facing now. This not only is happening through their viewers, but also on the inside. Longtime interviewer and TV show host Rachel Nichols caught herself in a shitstorm when commenting on ESPN giving Maria Taylor her spot covering the 2020 NBA Finals in a phone call that leaked saying, if you need to give her more things to do because you are feeling pressure about crappy longtime record on diversity, go for it. Rachel pointing Maria's success just due to her race stirred up drama that no one wants to be in. ESPN removed her from NBA coverage and confirmed last Thursday that they are cancelling her show altogether. If the status of these companies is as horrendous as it is to the public eye, just imagine the nightmare unfolding behind the scenes. Even the golden boy of ESPN, Stephen A. Smith, is catching some controversy with the release of Max Kellerman from First Take, which some are reporting is caused by issues with Stephen A. directly. Ah yes, the crumbling of the titans in the sports world is upon us. With every advantage that they could have to stick out over the competition, they are getting outperformed by authentic Joes and you love to see it. I can't tell you if I believe they're capable of bouncing back to the heights that they once reached, since with the money that these guys have, and the revenue that TV deals bring in, anything is possible. But this constant pattern of shitty content, with analysts who don't know a damn thing about what they're talking about, who constantly creates skepticism if the audience is being lied to, is not the solution to your shortcomings. That's it guys, thanks for watching, peace out.